Hi, hope you're having a great day. They say everything starts and ends in the gut, and it's so true, right? From your immunity to digestive problems, to acidity, to bloating, including most autoimmune disorders. Well, today we're going to talk about thyroid specifically. We've spoken about thyroid many times before. We're going to talk about Hashimoto's thyroid because there are so many people out there today who believe they have a thyroid problem, but most of them may have a Hashimoto thyroid problem, which means the protocol for treatment becomes completely different when you're looking at it through a spectacle of holistic awareness. Now what happens is if you have a thyroid problem today, they look at your TSH. Now they're also looking at your T3 and T4. But for many, many people, all decisions for their medication has been made on their TSH level. Now when you look at a thyroid gland, basically the thyroid gland uh, controls most of the metabolic activity in the human body. It's a very, very important gland. People who have thyroid issues know the feelings of sluggishness, uh, fatigue, you know, weight gain, the inability to lose weight, the mood fluctuations and all of that stuff happens when this gland isn't working the right way. Well, for the longest time, we're not here to challenge medicine, we're not here to challenge science. What we're here to look at is a different part to when something in the human body is not working the right way. So if there is an underactive gland, number one, why is the gland in my body underactive? Number two, what can I do to enable it to start behaving the way it was designed to behave? Now, many, many people may have to be on medication for a lifetime because it's multifactorial. There are people who don't change their stress levels. There are people who don't change the way they eat. They don't change their, you know, the way they sleep. It's multifactorial. You have a deficiency in your body. The gland doesn't have what it needs. It underperforms. If it has too much of what it needs, it overperforms. That's how the human body works. So when we're looking at a root cause approach, because... You know, I'm tired of believing the phrase that everyone has to be on a medication for a lifetime when it comes to BP, when it comes to thyroid. We already have hundreds and thousands of people across the world who are now off these medications, done the right way with their doctors in the loop. We're not here to tell you, get off your medications that the doctors have put you on. Your doctors have put you on medication for a reason. My point is, why a lifetime? Very, very few people will require it for, their, for a lifetime. But if the cause of your underactive gland is a lifestyle issue, then you can use lifestyle to reverse the same thing. Well, today we're not going to be talking about thyroid. We're going to talk about Hashimoto's. How do you know whether you have Hashimoto's? So an underactive thyroid gland we usually see has a deficiency of zinc, has a deficiency of certain oils, has a deficiency of selenium and certain vitamins. So in most cases, when you put that thyroid protocol together for them to enable the gland to get the nutrition it needs in terms of the lost vitamins and the minerals, the gland starts performing and eventually you don't need your synthetic thyroxine that's being put into your body. Of course, this has to be done the right way with your doctor in the loop. When it comes to Hashimoto's, today what you're going to understand is how your gut works. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disorder. So is arthritis, so is lupus, so is Crohn's disease, so is psoriasis, eczema. There are so many autoimmune diseases that people are living with, thinking that there is no solution to it. The solution starts and ends in your gut. So now for a moment, I want you to understand how your gut works in very, very, in a simple way. You eat your food, you're supposed to chew your food, you chew your, your, your food gets into your stomach. Your stomach starts digesting your food, it travels down all the way through your intestine into your gut. Now in your gut, you have a microbiome of good bacteria and bad bacteria. You need both of them in equal proportions. Now if the bad bacteria is more than the good bacteria, you have problems. You have acidity, you have bloating, you have improper assimilation of food, improper absorption of vitamins and minerals from the food that you eat, you have flatulence, you have all of those issues. If you have more of the good bacteria and less of the bad bacteria, that is the perfect ratio that your microbiome of the gut requires. You need the good and you need the bad. Now separating your gut and your blood is a thin lining called your gut lining. Now I want you to think of this gut lining as a thin fishing net with really small holes. Picture a fishing net with small holes. So you have your gut, you have your gut lining, and then across that you have your blood. So now the food that gets absorbed has to pass through your gut lining into your blood and your blood carries it to trillions of cells and organs in the human body. Now imagine that gut lining as a thin fishing net with small holes. This thin fishing net has little fingers called microvilli. These microvilli absorbs 
all the proteins and the nutrition and the vitamins and minerals from the food that you eat. So the digested food comes from your stomach into your gut. Your microbiome helps you to assimilate that food and further break it down into your vitamins and minerals. The microvilli fingers on that fishing net pulls across that nutrition, passes it through the gut lining into your blood, and your blood carries it to all your organs and trillions of cells in the body. That's a perfectly working gut and body. Now, over the years, because of a lot of acids in our food that we eat, because of a lot of sugar, junk food, wheat, dairy, when we have too much of this, the thin fishing net is very sensitive. Okay? Over time, the irritants start making those little holes larger and larger. Okay? And that's where all the problems begin. Those holes are supposed to be really small, but now they get larger and larger when you have too much of irritants, when you have too much of the bad bacteria in you, it irritates your gut lining, too much of wheat for people who have weak digestive systems, that's inflammatory. Anything that's inflammatory will affect that lining, making those little holes in the fishing net larger and larger. Now, after your gut, that's where you exit. That's where all the stuff which is supposed to be exited from your body passes out of your gut, down your colon, and out of your system in the form of your bowel movement. Now, when these holes in the fishing net get larger and larger, okay, protein molecules which are not supposed to enter your blood squeeze through those large holes because those holes in that fishing net is larger. They squeeze through the large holes and get into your blood. Those protein molecules are not supposed to be in your blood. They're supposed to pass out of your gut, through your colon, and bowel movement out of your system. But because you have a weak gut, or a leaky gut, or an inflamed gut, these protein molecules push through into your blood. Now, these protein molecules become foreign invaders. They're not supposed to be in your blood system. So your immune system flares up and starts attacking. It starts attacking these protein molecules, which are not supposed to be in your blood. This is perfect. This means your immunity is great. It is your body doing the right thing at the right time for you. Now, the problem is these protein molecules, there's something called molecular mimicry. These protein molecules represent molecules on your thyroid gland. They represent molecules on your knees and on your joints and on your skin. So all of a sudden, your immune system starts attacking you. So if these molecules have gone and, you know, caught up on your thyroid gland, molecular mimicry, remember, your immunity now sees it as a foreign invader and it starts attacking your thyroid gland and that's how you have an underactive thyroid gland and that's why you cannot produce enough of the hormone which is TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone. Your own immune system is attacking you. No amount of medication is going to make this, 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 your, your problem better. It's going to keep your parameters on your reports looking fantastic, which is a good thing. But if you want to heal and you want to prevent further damage because your own immune system is attacking your body from happening, you've got to heal the gut lining. You've got to heal your gut. You make, you've got to make sure you have the right microbiome, which means the right kind of bacterial, the, the right kind of bacteria in your gut. You gotta heal your gut lining so that those holes become smaller and smaller and it keeps the protein molecules on the other side of your body to be exited, to be flushed out. So now, these, your, your immune system starts attacking your thyroid gland and that is called Hashimoto's thyroid. If these molecules go somewhere on your skin, it's your immune system starts attacking your skin and that's what we see in eczemas and psoriasis, vitiligo. If it starts attacking other parts of your bodies and your organs and organs and membranes, you have lupus. For arthritis, which is an autoimmune disorder, it goes and settles down on your joints and your immune system says, hey, this isn't supposed to be here and it starts attacking your joints through inflammation. So all your arthritic pain, which is inflammation, is your own immune system attacking you. What is the solution? Yes, you have all of allopathy, we're not against allopathy, to treat your symptom, to relieve you of the discomfort and pain, to make your medical parameters on paper look good, but you are not getting at the root cause. And as those holes in your gut lining get larger and larger, today it may be Hashimoto's, tomorrow it's gonna to be a skin issue, and then probably arthritis, because you're allowing that gate to be open for all the protein molecules to enter your blood system. So you keep your immune system on high alert all the time attacking your own body. So now how do you know if you have thyroid or Hashimoto's? 
There's a test that you can do and for the longest time we've been trying to get the medical world to prescribe these tests the moment you have symptoms of a thyroid gland. It is called your TPO, it's simply your antibody test. So you do a TPO test which is your antibodies. So now let me explain what happens in your immune system. It's a vast subject but I'm going to make it as quick as possible. So you have lymphocytes which is one part of your intelligent immune system. Your lymphocytes break down into T killer cells and your B cells. Your T killer cells recognize pathogens, viruses, bacteria, foreign invaders and kill them directly. Your B cells produce antibodies. These antibodies are molecules which go and engulf the pathogen or the germ or the foreign invader and they produce compounds to kill it. So this is your immune system working beautifully. T killer cells and B cells. This is only one small part of your immune system, but we're only gonna talk about this today. So now, antibodies. The protein molecule gets into your blood. Your immune system starts producing more B killer cells. Now these B cells produce more antibodies. So the more protein molecules you have in your blood, the more antibodies you have in your blood. And that's why we do a TPO test, because if your antibody level comes on the higher side, that means you have autoimmune. That means your thyroid is Hashimoto's. It is caused by a leaky gut syndrome. It is caused by a weak gut lining. And that's where all your effort has to go to heal it. Not just taking synthetic thyroxine. That is not your solution. Over the years, you're going to have more and more problems because you didn't seal the gut lining. So then you get into your gut health and you start looking at the foods that you're eating, the lifestyle that you're living, the kind of exercise you do, how much of sleep you have. Your stress levels have a direct impact on the thyroid gland for the longest time. Because I'll tell you, if you keep moving so fast and not resting enough, your body has to find a way of slowing you down. So it starts by slowing down your thyroid function. That's your regulator. It slows down thyroid function automatically to slow you down. So you feel tired and you feel fatigued. And this goes back to evolution as well. As winter started approaching, people's thyroid glands would start slowing down to prepare you for hibernation, to prepare you for rest, to store more body fat because we didn't have a food supply chain like we have today in the initial days. They were hunters and gatherers. You were lucky if you found food, you stored a little bit of food, and there were many times where there was famine and scarcity of food. So you didn't starve to death. Your thyroid gland slowed you down so that you start storing more fat so that you have more energy. And that's exactly what happens when women and men today are overly stressed. They don't sleep enough. Your body will follow what it needs to do, not what you want it to do. It will slow down your thyroid gland to protect you. When you skip your meals, you go on these starvation diets, you punish yourself by eating less and exercising more. Your body thinks you're going in famine. It tries to slow you down by shutting down, not shutting down, slowing down your thyroid function. Because when it slows you down, you feel fatigued, you feel tired, you don't want to move. That's how your body is naturally trying to slow you down. And that's why stress has a direct impact on your thyroid problem. Most people today may not need medication if they're highly stressed and they're sleeping less. That is their solution. Start looking at your stress more effectively and start sleeping more and your thyroid gland will start healing. That's if you have a lot of stress in your life and of course many people have genuine issues of thyroid glands, deficiencies. But coming back to Hashimoto's, it is a gut issue. It starts and ends in your gut. All your focus for good health, prevention and healing has to be with your gut because your gut controls everything in the human body. From depression to the way you eat, your cravings, the way you feel, your bowel movement, your immune system, everything starts in the gut. So the first thing you want to do is see, do I have Hashimoto's? Because if you have Hashimoto's, you have something that you can work on, something that you can possibly heal. And the healing process is completely different. It requires dietary changes. It requires making sure that you have the right vitamins and minerals in your body. It requires you to keep off certain inflammatory foods that are constantly affecting your gut. So today everyone's talking about gluten intolerance and lactose intolerance, including people who are not celiac. Why? Because they have weak gut linings. So the moment they have wheat or they have gluten, which is a strong protein, it's inflammatory in nature. There's nothing wrong with gluten. Gluten is not bad for us, but gluten is bad for you if you have a weak gut and a poor lifestyle. Because the gluten or the lactose in milk will irritate that thin fishing net. It will inflame it, making those holes larger and larger. And that's where all the problems start. You have the wrong molecules enter your blood, your immune system flares up and starts attacking your own body. So no amount of creams for psoriasis or eczema, no amount of arthritic injections or painkillers and no amount of thyroid medication can heal you. It can treat you. 
It will not heal you if you have an autoimmune disorder caused by a leaky gut. So you gotta put your focus into your gut, heal your gut, and that's when you can really start looking at getting out of these conditions. It's possible. How can we challenge the intelligence of the human body that has the ability to heal? We are the only people who compromise the healing by coming in with all these symptomatic treatments and without a focus on the root cause. Take the, symp uh, the symptomatic treatment. Take it. You'll need it. But do not forget that you need to look for the root cause and address the root cause of your problem. When you find the root cause and you start working with that, your condition will get better. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. So if you have your thyroid, if you have thyroid in your system or any autoimmune disorder, you want to check your TPO test. It's a normal blood test. You want to add to it, you can do your TG, which is your thyroid globulin as well. And remember, when you're checking your thyroid function, do not rely on just TSH. You need to look at your T3 and T4 conversion in your liver. You see, the biggest problem today is we've separated the human body. It's like a plumbing job. So you have a problem with diabetes, you look only at sugar levels. You don't look at the pancreas. You have a problem with the thyroid, you don't look at the liver, but the liver and the thyroid gland are connected. Every part of the human body is connected with each other. You have a kidney disease, we only look at the kidney. You're not looking at whether the patient's on high blood pressure medication or has diabetes, which is the possible cause of kidney failure. Everything in the human body is connected, which is why you can't separate it. You gotta look at it holistically and you get, get you gotta to get to the root cause and have a holistic approach to whatever you do with the human body and the human mind. Have a great day, everyone.